Hello and welcome to vlog number 33. Wow. Um, this is now my third time trying to film this intro clip because I keep saying I'm going to keep it short and then I keep waffling on about nothing. So this time we are going to keep it short. I have to get cracking with work today. I've got a lot to do, but I wanted to quickly come in and introduce the vlog because I have a lot to do after work as well. Um, so this vlog is going to be a little bit shorter because I'm going away um, with my family next Monday, which means I can't edit the vlog on Monday. I'm going to have to edit it on Sunday. So I'm going to vlog up to Saturday and then Sunday will be next week's vlog. Are you following? I'm sure you are. It's not too complicated. Um, but yeah, so sorry in advance if this is shorter. I don't think it will. I can waffle on whatever day of the week it is. So it should be, you should barely notice. Um, but reading plans for the week, I want to finish Air of Fire, which I've said so many times, um, but I am now 341 pages in, so I only have this chunk left to go. So I think we can do it. And then this is where it gets far too ambitious. I want to read the whole of Thirst. I don't know what's coming down the road, but I'm just gonna have to talk over it because I need to get back to work. Um, this is a chonker. It's like 600 pages long, 594. So it's a lot and I split it down into what works for six days. There are going to be six days in this vlog. So it's doable if I just read this, but I also want to read this. So we will see. That really hurt my ear. I just hit myself with it. But yeah, ambitious plans. Um, also have a very busy work day. I'm actually going out and working at a client's site on Wednesday. So I'll have all day where I can't like casually unbox stuff and casually update and read in lunch. Like that's not going to happen. And I'm really upset about it. I'm not used to that world, but that's how it goes, I guess. Um, I guess starting getting back to normal means I have less free time, which sucks. But yeah, it's how it goes. So I'll be doing that on Wednesday. So maybe this will be a really short vlog. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to stop rambling about nothing and I will see you when something interesting and potentially bookish happens. Hello. So I have a really random question that I just want your guys' input on really, because I don't know whether I'm being um, spoiled. I don't know. Um, I have three days or two nights in um, Bristol with work. Uh, just because it's where we have a bigger office so it makes sense i don't mind going um obviously want to go hang out and meet new people and everything so exciting but they've asked us to buddy up with hotel rooms and share with somebody from our office and i just said i'm not comfortable doing it like i cannot see a situation where i would be comfortable sleeping in a hotel room like with beds next to each other with somebody from work that's not okay with me um, I am awake till silly o'clock in the morning on the phone with Cole. You know, I want to walk around in my underwear in a hotel room. Like, I want to shower and sing in the shower. Like, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable sharing and I cannot see a time where I ever would. I just feel like it's really unprofessional and I don't, I, uncomfortable. I'm really uncomfortable with the idea. I am perfectly fine being friends with people from work but not to the level where oh sorry it's 6am and Cole wants to call me about something no like let's get ready next to each other no what do you think am I being a spoiled brat I don't think I am I think it's weird for work to ask you to share a bedroom with somebody you work with well I should say you can kill yourself uh, plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Hello, it is 8am on Tuesday and this is a big deal for me because I do not get out of bed till 8.56 to start at 9. It's actually now, what time? 8.13, so I've given myself 13 minutes to eat breakfast, stick some clothes on, but I'm awake earlier than I need to be and I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm not loving it, but like it's happening. So what I'm actually going to do is try and read some more of Air of Fire. I had a perfect reading opportunity last night. I was going to watch Rebecca's sprints and finish the ball, finish this whole book, but I didn't. I hung out with Cole virtually, of course. Um, reading just wasn't, I, I can't get it back to being my like number one thing in a week. I don't know whether I'm stressed with work and just trying to literally switch off my brain at night, but I need to switch it back on because I want to finish this. So yeah, I'm going to try and read a little bit before work. Okay. It's Tuesday. Somehow I forgot this was coming and now it's here. 
oh my god i am so excited so this one is all thanks to rachel and her boyfriend mark and this is potentially going to be the most exciting bookish thing that i own are you ready i don't think you're ready <laughs> oh my christ so these are first edition hardbacks of the twilight books Oh god, they're gorgeous. And I think she said only Twilight has ever been opened. Like, if I just show you, so perfect hardback of Twilight. This is my copy of Twilight. The apple isn't even red anymore. Like, this is the best thing. What is this inside? Ooh, we have a little, little print thing. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, that's exciting. Okay, so Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse. And actually, I think Breaking Dawn is going to be the biggest comparison. So this is my copy of Breaking Dawn. Like, do you know how excited I am to own this? But of course, I'll never be able to thank Rachel and Mark enough for this. I am Okay, I can't fit this back in now. Did you guys know this was in here? Maybe I... Oh, there's four. Oh, we're going to have to do something with those. I don't know what, but we're going to have to do something. Let's wedge it back in there. That's not... It's not going to fit. Um, Yeah. I just want to love these forever. Yeah, I went to the school with my dad for a Also, my dad didn't cut PJ apples. Hello, it is six o'clock on Tuesday and the angle is getting worse and worse. And we're on my bed because this is where I actually got a lot of reading done this morning. I picked up Air of Fire um, to try and get a little bit of reading done before work and I managed to get up to page 397. So I can finish this tonight. I'm going to do it. Even if I run Twitter sprints by myself or something, it's going to happen. But during the day, I casually picked up the audiobook for Where the Crawdads Sing uh, by Delia Owens, which I bought the book because it's gorgeous. And I managed to listen to 250 pages today. So, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I don't quite know how I got all of that listened to. Um, but I only have, how many pages is this? It's like 370 pages. So I have 120 pages left. I'm working away at a client's tomorrow, so I can't listen to it tomorrow. So I'm going to have to do it on Thursday when I'm back at home. But yeah, isn't that mental? So mental. But that's going well. Um, it's like a three and a half star right now. It's giving me to kill a mockingbird vibes, which I know is completely made up by me. Um, but what's happened in this, obviously not so far, I'm not going to spoil anything. But this is about Kaya who has always lived out on the marshes with her dad. Uh, she's known as the Marsh Girl. Um, and then somebody, a guy called Chase Andrews, is found dead. She, Kaya is suspected of his murder. So it's good. I'd say that probably the back... I don't know. I don't think the blurb really describes the book that well. Like, so far, all of it's kind of... Like, it's sort of just happened. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm going to stop talking. I'm obviously... I don't seem to have the um, ability to talk. But I'm going to sit and chill and read Air of Fire for a bit. Uh, maybe put some old sprints on my TV just to have something to read along with. I don't know. Good morning. I am dressed to actually go and work. This is mad. Um, but to quickly hop on, I'm not liking this camera angle now, I just wanted to prove that I'd got dressed and it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. Guess who still didn't finish Air of Fire? It's me. Hello, it is Thursday morning. Today is definitely a who cares about my appearance, I definitely don't kind of day. I mean, this started off as a messy bun, but I've slept on it. <laughs> there shouldn't be any need for me to put a camera on at any point today is the point I'm making and... I've got a long day of work because I'm not going to do a full day tomorrow because I'm babysitting. I hate saying babysitting. I'm having my goddaughter here for a sleepover. That's babysitting in my opinion, but I'm going to have fun. So last night, I finally finished Air of Fire. Took me long enough, but it's done now. I'm so glad I've actually finally read it. 
Um, I only had about 50 pages left yesterday. I read a little bit in the morning and then finished it off in bed at night with Gavin's support sprints. They were lovely as always. Um, and yeah, three stars. This was pretty much a disappointment. Um, there were parts of it I enjoyed. There were parts of it I was so bored. Well, I would say with the Wyverns, like I don't get that whole storyline and it was about a fifth of the book and I just didn't care. Let's bear in mind, it's this long and the books get bigger from here on and I don't care. So I'm really hoping I start caring about stuff again. My favourite parts were, again, trying to do it with no spoilers, um, Sorsha, love it. I think that was what I really loved. <laughs> so yeah, not the best one in the series so far, definitely my least favourite. I've got a lot to do today in terms of tidying, making my apartment as child safe as possible um and just tidying because i've let it all go a little bit to think oh i'll just do it thursday thursday has come and it's very unwelcome um but yeah we're gonna have to tidy today which is fantastic i really can't be bothered uh working at a client yesterday was interesting it was a weird experience um i won't go on too much about my life but i did have to come face to face with somebody that i would rather never see in my life again um related to my ex-boyfriend so uh yeah had to put up with him making funny comments throughout the day and it just wasn't it wasn't a fun time there were times where I genuinely just wanted to take myself into another room and cry um but got through it which I was quite proud of myself for even though it's really silly but I I was happy for not crying <laughs> Um, ended up doing some really good work, make, meeting some really good people there. So it was just this one person that I really wish wouldn't have been there. I'd been convincing myself for weeks that he wasn't going to be there. I knew he worked there and I was convinced myself he wasn't going to be there and he was there and it wasn't a fun time for me. But hey ho, that's what happens. <laughs> so we need to start work now and let's pretend I'm going to start first today. We will see what happens. I'm not in any desperate mood to read right now anyway i think my reading is going really well um with how busy i am so yeah i'm not too fast on reading but if i read i'm going to pick up thirst hello it is what time about half 12 on thursday um and i just finished the audiobook for where the crawdads sing so i was really excited about having the physical copy of this and then i just kept finding myself thinking I was never going to pick it up. So I found the audiobook on Libby and I've been listening to it while I work. And I think I'm going to give this book three stars, maybe three and a half. Yeah, let's give it three and a half. I've settled on in my brain. It was good. The setting was really well described. I really loved Kaya, our main character, and the whole thing gave me To Kill a Mockingbird vibes, like somebody who's misunderstood on the outskirts of society and um, there's, there is literally a murder trial. It was very To Kill a Mockingbird-esque, in my opinion, and I really enjoyed it. It's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I don't need to keep this around. I'm not gonna read it again. It was beautifully written, but it just didn't do everything for me that I wanted it to. So yeah, it was good, it was fine, it just wasn't amazing. Um, and I forgot to tell you this morning, my nan did give me a book yesterday. She left it with my parents um, and that is the Catherine Howard book of Six Tudor Queens. So this is actually book number five, um, but my nan has been reading them and getting rid of them before I knew that I was potentially interested in picking these up. So annoyingly, she's a very both broken sprite, both broken wow broken spine kind of reader um but yeah she decided to give this to me rather than take it to a charity shop which lovely book number five so it's going to take me a second to get all of these and get to this but i'm really happy that i now own it so thank you nan <laughs> um yeah that's that i don't have anything more exciting i have a book swap parcel on the way it should be here very soon and i'm really excited about it so i can't wait to share that one with you guys okay it arrived. I don't know why I'm so excited for this. I liked the sound of it ages ago when I heard it was a book and just haven't picked it up. So when I saw it on Bookswap, oh, it says thank you. <laughs> this is chunkier than I thought it was. Jeez. But this is it's not okay. It's not okay to feel blue and other lies. Um, by Scarlett Curtis. 
I've heard mixed things about this, to be honest, about how some of the messages are really good and how some just aren't so good. But this is inspirational, inspirational people open up about their mental health. Um, and Stephen Fry says it's the freshest, most honest collection of writing about mental health I've read, full of wit, passion and emotion. So I'm quite excited. We've got who's in here? Adam Kay, Davina McCall, Lena Dunham, Matt Haig. Miranda Hart, oh my god, Sam Smith, Scarlett Moffat, oh, I'm quite excited. Um, it's quite a chunky little guide in here, but um, quite excited. Hello, I am scared this is going to be the shortest vlog ever because it's already Friday morning and this vlog's only going until Saturday. I've got to work now until I pick up my goddaughter for a sleepover, so I don't really want to vlog her being here. I don't know how her mum would feel about that, so we're just going to not uh rather than broach the subject um and i don't really have a reading update so i started thirst last night and i read 56 pages in half an hour i did a half an hour reading sprint and that's all i did i just stopped so pretty annoyed at myself i didn't even stop on a chapter but then i watched cole and his mate play gta for like three hours what did i gain last night nothing I did start making, actually I will show you. So if you're not aware, I do journal every single day, everything about my life. It's not a bullet journal, it's not like a creative journal, it's just an everything goes in it journal. And I've got space for like two more months in my current journal, but I wanted to start another one. This one I've had for a while, and it's my first ever dotted journal. I don't like it because the dots, I don't even know if this will pick up, are far too close. I don't know whether that's up on camera um but yeah last night I sat I made a little title page which I kind of like and then I decided um I've been <laughs> shamed a lot recently for my giant TBR um in a way that I am also shamed by it now I think it's far too intense and I know I'm gonna get some more next week when I go away um I have too many unread books, basically. So to hold myself accountable, I decided to write down every single book on my TBR. I got quite deep into doing this and then I just physically had to give up. So I got to books that I bought just before Christmas. Um, and yeah, I have 283 books on my TBR, I think it is. So I should be nearly done. But yeah, even that, I just wanted to make it pretty. And I decided when I start a new journal, I want to have my TBR at the front and I can cross them off as I go and I'll feel really accomplished by it. Um, so that gives me until like August when I'll need to migrate into this. But all very exciting. Um, I already know I, I don't like how this journal is with the dots. It's going to be a lot of writing on paper and sticking it in, I think. But yeah, that is literally it. I'm sorry I don't have anything to say. Um, apart from... Everybody who watches my vlogs, you'll know that when I start work at nine, well, every day, Monday to Friday, I don't really get out of bed till 8.55. And today I woke up at like quarter past seven, had a nice message from Victoria. I was like, oh, let's welcome in the day. And I actually got out of bed by like half seven. What has happened to me? I shouldn't have done it. I need the sleep for tonight because I know that I've never been in charge of a kid's bedtime. So if I tell her it's bedtime, there is no way she's listening to me. It's gonna be a difficult night, I think. I, I don't, I've never had to do discipline on a kid. Like I've never had to say no, do what I say. Um, so we're just gonna hope that she does what I say. Whew, stressed. Um, she's also bringing five books that she's reading right now. Um, she wants to look through my books. I swear if a spine gets broke. <laughs> I was going to make a really aggressive comment then, let's not. But yeah, I'm so scared. I guess I'll let you know. Maybe I'll try and do some like B-roll because we're going to watch a movie, eat some pizza, get some pancakes for breakfast on Saturday. So maybe I'll, I'll try and do a little montage and I'll let you know how it goes. Unless they have an exciting delivery today and then you'll see something through the day. But no reading is going to happen apart from she wants to read a book in bed before she goes to sleep and I can get on board with that, so... That's fine by me. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. That is a reading update. I started reading the audiobook of Caraval yesterday. I don't know if I told you. As soon as I finished where the crawdads sing, I wanted another one. And I was gonna casually start listening to this and I got to page 177. <laughs> so really wasn't a casual listen to. And I, do you mind? The Waitrose van. Um, yeah, wasn't casual in any sense of the word. 
really enjoying this going back into it especially with the audiobook and I just occasionally look down at the page but really I'm listening to the audiobook and just catching up and putting my bookmark to the chapter when I get there and um, so yeah I've got a couple of things to do now like to make this house child friendly I don't know I just want to move things I just want to like tidy everything just in case so I'm gonna put the audiobook back on for this and um yeah tidy up around the house Hello, I am done with work. So I am off now until the 1st of June and I genuinely feel like a new human. I don't really have much to say. I just wanted to bring you an update. So I've been carrying on with Caraval. I got up to page 298 out of, what is this, just over 400? I think it's 405, maybe slightly less. No, 400 and 405 pages. And I was getting quite worried listening to the audiobook I thought I was enjoying it less than I did when I read it physically and I was like oh it's going to be a four star not a five and then I checked Goodreads and I did give this a four star the first time round so maybe I feel exactly the same <laughs> I don't know I did read it in February of 2019 that feels like such a long time ago now so it hasn't actually been that long but yeah I'm feeling very four star about it I will try and get this finished Maybe tomorrow when I'm like pottering around doing things. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to finish this, but I will do it before I go on holiday because I'm not going to... I need to savour my data for phone calls with Cole at night. Um, so I'm not going to be listening to audiobooks, but that's the plan. Then I did get to read a teeny bit more of Thirst while I was waiting for a meeting. So I'm up to page 78 now. I have about an hour and a half until I need to worry about going to pick up my goddaughter. So I'm sticking on some sprints and I'm going to carry on reading this. I did remember very slightly, I don't know what the word I want is, that there were Hindu um, elements to this, like inspirations. And um, that's starting to come through now already. So I'm really happy that that question in my brain has been ticked off um, because I do kind of remember what's going on now. But so far we're reading The Last Vampire is the first book and we're learning all about um, her original name. Her name was Sita, but she's now known as Alyssa. And then she goes to a school and she's known as Lara or Lena or something like that. Anyway, and she is the last vampire. Um, it's told very weirdly. Why am I talking about all this? Who am I talking to? I send out these words, these thoughts, simply because it is time. Time for what I do not know and it does not matter because it is what I want and it and that is always reason enough for me. So the narration style is a little bit weird, but I'm kind of kind of enjoying it. And if I remember rightly, this is a bit of an older title now. I don't want to offend anyone. 1994, the first book came out that I'm reading right now. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of an older title on the vampire scale, but I feel like it's done pretty well so far. So yeah, I'm going to crack on with this for a little bit. Hello, it is one o'clock on Saturday and I'm shattered completely shattered um and Lacey even though she wanted to go to bed at 6 30 yesterday we stayed awake and it meant that she got up at six o'clock this morning so I'm tired um I might have to have a nap like genuinely um but one thing she really really likes reading so she's taken away a few of my older books some of my Jacqueline Wilson's and we were reading last night I was reading Thirst she was reading Goth Girl it was called and I got to page 172. So I know it sounds like a big goal, but I want to finish this whole thing tonight. This has got three books in it, as I've probably said a thousand times, and I'm going to rate each book independently. I've only got about 20 pages left of the first book and it's a three star for me. It's kind of fine. So I'm going to sit and finish this off. And that's my only plan for today. But really excitingly, I have another book swap parcel. How cute is this tape? I would show you more of it, but my address, so I can't. Yeah, I obviously I know what this is. It's from Bookswap. I'm so excited to own this. Oh, it's been wrapped up all nicely. Cute. So cute. I forgot how small mangas are, but are you ready? Cole has watched this anime, which is what really made me want to pick up the um the manga itself. But it's okay quality. Um this is Fruits Basket Volume 1. And this is about, it's like a world where people are the, the different star signs, horoscopes. And if you touch them, they turn into it. 
I don't know. It says teen, age 13 plus and romance. Um, and yeah, Cole has watched the anime and really enjoyed it. So I decided to give the manga a go. And uh, yeah, steal again from Bookswap. And yeah, on that note, I'm gonna get comfy, put my feet up, start reading Thirst. Hello, it is about 20 past two and I've just finished the first book in, the, in this bind up, um, The Last Vampire, which I'm gonna give three stars. It was fine. I really liked the origins of the vampire species. I thought that was really, really clever. And this had a lot of links to Hinduism, um, especially Krishna. So it was really cool, something I haven't seen before and I enjoyed it, but the relationships were formed too easily. Like the characters had emotions, but there was no build up for those emotions. And that was slightly frustrating. But yeah, we're now a third of the way into this massive book. India is doing impromptu sprints in like 10 minutes. So more, eight minutes. So I'm definitely going to be watching those. But I had another funny story to tell. So um, in my window, I have, I've just realised the washing machine's on, so that's all you're going to be able to hear. But in my window, I have a giant golden snitch that fits all of my nail varnish in. So it's just there. It's from Boots. You like pop it open and it's got all my nail varnish. And a woman, there's my, oh God, that's not flattering, is it? A woman walked up to the window with her son and said, look, Jack, it's a snitch. And they were stood on the other side of, of my window looking at my furniture. So I'm like, lay here. I sat up like, hmm, what are we doing? And they didn't apologise for looking in. I'm not a museum. This is my bedroom. I don't get people. If I got caught looking in someone's bedroom because I thought I saw something cool, I'd be mortified. Um, apparently some people aren't mortified. They just want to show their kids some merch in the window. Don't get it personally. Um, I'm sort of weirded out that people feel like they can just study my window. Very weird. Hello, it is now half five. I've got my dinner in bed, which is scampi, uh, potato minions and chips. <laughs> which I don't feel bad about. But yeah, I've got India Sprints on and I'm reading this, obviously still. I've just finished book number two. Um, again, three stars, was fine, but wasn't like completely mind blowing. Uh, so I'm gonna start the last one, Red Dice. I feel like this is gonna be a three star book, but I am enjoying my time with it. Hello, it is 20 past eight and I've been watching some old sprints from Gavin. Um, his spring support sprints from this week, which I'm so sad I missed. So I've been watching them and doing that, I finished Thirst. I read this whole thing pretty much today. How? 600 pages. How? I don't know, but it's happened. Uh, this is definitely a three star. Uh, the actual story I don't even love. I just like how much work has gone into this vampire world and like the backstories and it's so it's so like detailed um there's lots of explanations for everything everything is a bit convenient and we know what's going to happen as soon as we start that chunk of the book but i had a good time with it so three stars and yeah that's ticked a massive massive book off my tbr i do have thirst number two and three i'm not going to be in a rush to get to them but i'm going to make sure i put number two in my tbr box so that it is an option um but yeah I mean, I'm sad I didn't read it sooner because I probably could have read these and unhauled them all a very long time ago. Um, but we've done it now and it's floppy. So I'm going to wrap the vlog up here. I'm sorry if it's been a really short one, but I feel like next week is going to be quite something um, because we've got tomorrow and then the whole of um, my little trip away and then a Saturday, Sunday after that. So I think it's going to be quite full. We will see what happens. Um, so maybe it's a good thing if this one does come out a bit shorter. If you've watched this vlog all the way to this point, then please do leave me an emoji with, of a drink because of this being called Thirst. Any drink, cocktail. I don't know what is even in the emojis. Um, as I always say, I really do appreciate when any of you guys get to the end of my vlogs. It makes me so, so happy. Puts a massive smile on my face and I appreciate you so much for it so i would appreciate you letting me know with a drink emoji but on that note that's really all i have to say this week so thank you very much for watching this video i really do hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one mm -hmm.